In this series of quick tips, we're exploring the relationship between value and intensity scientifically. In the first set of quick tips, 225-226, uh, we explored blue and orange. In the next set, we explored violet and yellow. Today, we're exploring the, the worst of all to deal with, red and green. In order to do these scientific studies scientifically, we need to first adjust the hues of each color we're working with. Now, the red and green are just really, really difficult to work with because they fluctuate so much. Both red and green fluctuate so much. So this first part, in, uh, part A of, of this set of quick tips, just going to show you how we can adjust those colors to get them as close to complements as possible. So the first step then is um, we need to come up with a green and we need to come up with a red. So I have here the, the color wheel that shows that green and red are complements. So let's begin with the green. Alright, so there's numbers of ways that we can come up with a green. People, a lot of people prefer just to mix their greens from a blue and a yellow. Um, others, like myself, uh, prefer to start out with a particular green and adjust it. It doesn't matter. I challenge you to look at any painting that uses green and know whether that artist actually mixed the green from yellow and blue or started with a particular green. So. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to put this right down here now kind of in a mixing area because you'll see in a minute I need to build, um, I may need to build the, the dark, the middle, and the light of the green here and the dark, the middle, and the light of the red here. But I need to be sure that they are exact uh, or they are hues that are as close to the exact complement as possible. So I'm starting out here with the, with the green I prefer, which is by brand, the Rembrandt Viridian. No other Viridian will work for this. So if you don't have Rembrandt Viridian, you can use Thalo Green and come up with a similar results. Um, or if you prefer mixing your greens for doing this study, go ahead and do that. The important thing is that you it's the procedure, it's the principle that you follow. These are designed to help you to, to develop a sensitivity to the variations of value and intensity, which is also saturation. So we'll start out with this one. Now what I need to do, first of all, is to come up with green. This is blue-green as it appears on the palette, you can see. So I will add yellow to this blue-green. And yellow, these need to be as high intensity as possible. So what I want to see if I can do here is to, is to mix a green that is high intensity and a green that will neutralize with a red. So I was, this is where we begin. This is, this is part of the scientific study. Part of it is exploring where we don't know what's going to happen. I can predict because I've done it so many times. But we don't know what's going to happen, but we're in the process of discovering what's going to happen. So, as you can see, the more of this viridian that I pull into this mixture, the more um, it leans towards cool rather than warm. So let's just stop right there. And now I will go to my color wheel, which is not necessarily uh, an exact registration, but you can see... I'm very close to the green of the color wheel. Now, uh, you can also see if you squint and you look at that green on the palette, you can see it's a little bit darker than that middle value. So, uh, so we need to aim for an adjustment of middle value um, and to be sure that we have a green that's going to neutralize with red. Alright, so here comes the next part. I'm going to begin with this green. Now, red, um, I, I've done quick tips on green and quick tips on red. Both of them are difficult colors to manage, so you need to, uh, it's, it would pay off for all painters to do 
uh, quite a bit of, bit of study with both red and green in order to explore all the things that can happen with them. The one color, there, there are a few colors that come straight out of the tube that will be what we'd call spectral red, or that means that it's as close to red in the spectrum as we can get. Uh, one of those is napful red. So that's what I have here. Now, normally I don't keep napful red on my palette. Uh, I use the cadmium red light, mixture of cadmium red light and alizarin crimson for working with my reds. But um, I'm going to use napful red here because it is the closest uh, or the closest color I have in my collection um, to being a complement of green. Now, I want to look first of all to be sure that these two are in the same value range. Otherwise it's going to throw kinks in my study, or in this is a scientific study as I said early. Also, I need to make, make you aware that naphthal red is a very strong color. Uh, viridian, viridian tint, is not as strong. So I need to go easy with naphthal red as I mix it into a viridian, or one into the other, um, in order to be able to control it. So the next step in order to remember what we're doing here, we're adjusting the hues to get them as close to exact complements as possible. So if you think that this red, this green, and this red are complements as you're looking at them right now, you won't really know until you mix the two together. And, they, and to be mixed together, they, as I said before, they should be in the same value range. So what I'll do here is I'll pull a little bit of this green, the mixture of the green here, and gradually, gradually add, add naphthal red to it. Now, as we add naphthal red to it, you can see how it changes. It's already getting neutral, but will you, you notice that it's a neutral leaning towards red? And that's because naphthal red is such a strong hue. So I need to pull more green in. Now let's see, will these two neutralize each other? Or will I have to make adjustments to one of the hues? Now, at this point, you're going to be asking me why is it necessary for them to neutralize each other completely. The answer to that is that this is a scientific study. And so our objective here is to try to control the colors so that we can find two hues that will exactly neutralize each other. Now, I want you to watch what's happening here. Um, I'm going to get a piece of paper and do a, a, some little swatches to show you what's happening here. As I pull more red into this mixture, can you see that it is neutral, live, neutralized, let's say, but it's leaning a little bit more towards red. Now, if I put this piece of paper here, this, just one piece of paper is all it needs, I put this here and I make a splotch, or a little, little sample here, and I hold it up here, it, that feels relatively neutral. Uh, but it's still a little bit dark to tell. So let's see, let's pull a little bit of white. I'm going to pull this part that I have on the back of the knife, and I'm going to pull this over here. Now I'm going to add just enough white to make it middle value. So <clears throat> testing these in middle value um, is the most accurate way to test them, because as they go into shadow, the colors themselves are naturally going to become a little bit more neutral as they get darker. And as they go into light, they will also get a little bit more neutral. So you can find in the middle value range uh, the truer colors. So I'll put that little spot right there, add just a little bit of white. Got to be careful, I don't add too much because I want it to be middle value. And how will I know middle value? I have a middle value palette. So when it blends with the palette, I know I have the middle value. Now, if I hold this up here, can you tell that that leans a little bit towards green? It doesn't seem to be an exact neutral. Leans just a little bit towards green. Um, I don't know if you can tell that. What I want to do first of all is to check, show you here. If you have, if you don't have one of these, this is a really wonderful little tool to have. They're very readily available in all the art supply stores. It's called a grayscale or value finder. Um, it, it just separates the values to not in shadow on this side and in shadow more or less on this side. Um, and these are the middle value ranges right here. 
Now, if we hold this right here, let's just hold it right here like that. Now you can see this is completely neutral. Now you can see that that leans a little bit towards green. So if we add just a little bit more red to it, you see this gets tedious, but uh, we just want to show you how these, well, what these two colors do to each other. So if you add a little bit more of that red to it, and pull it over, let's get it on this side now and add the white to it. Now what happens? Let's get just a little bit more of that. Didn't get quite enough. Now what happens? <clears throat> Just hold this up here again against that. Now can you see it gets a little bit more neutral. See it right in here. That's not quite middle value. Um, but it's close enough for us to see. I need to add that red, a little bit more of that red to it to get it a little bit more neutral. Now on the palette it seems redder. So that's why you need to test it. Test it with a little bit of white. And you'll find this a little bit difficult, especially if you use the Naphtho Red. You'll find that a little bit difficult uh, because that Naphtho Red is so strong it wants just to take over the green. If, if it wants to stay a little bit more on the red side, uh, that means, and you, and you add the green and then it leans more towards the green side, that means that something needs to be adjusted. A lot of times if it leans towards, more towards the green side, uh, what you'll need to do is make that green just a little bit cooler. Or if it leans more on the red side, you might need to make the red just a little bit cooler or a little warmer. Uh, but here I think that's close enough. And so that means now we are ready to begin to build the mixtures. So what I need here is I need a mixture. Uh, this is a middle value mixture. I need a mixture that is going to be exactly what I have here in order to do this scientific study. <clears throat> so that mixture would go, I'm going to put it right here, right there, on the palette. And I'm going to go ahead now and create more of it um, so that I'll be sure I have enough to do the study. So this is the way to do that. Save part of the mixture somewhere else so that you'll have something to compare it with. And remember, all we did here was to add yellow to Viridian in order to get um, the green that we need in order to neutralize it with naphtha Red. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm going to say something. And that is that if you don't have naphtha Red, you may have another red. You may have Cadmium Red or another red. All you need to do is to find a green that's going to neutralize it. And that is by trial and error. A green, is, a green that neutralizes it is going to need to be either, have, uh, have either more yellow in it or more, uh, more blue in it because yellow and blue makes green. So I'm going to put this right here so that I'm sure I have enough in order to do this study. So this is what this, this particular quip, uh, tip <laughs> is about is you're being able, you're building the color knowing how to build color um, and, and get a set of colors in order to in order to do the study itself. So that's the green. Now uh, I can when I squint at that green I see that it's a little bit darker than the palette therefore is a little bit darker than middle volume. I'm going to leave that there and adjust it when I do the study itself. And knowing that these two neutralize each other I'm going to take this away and put naphtha red right here so that I can uh, so I can work those two when we get to building the chart which would be the next quick tip so it won't take much of this naphtha red I know that already so now I have those two the next set of colors I need to build would be either the darkest dark or the lightest light in order to do this study in order to do it scientifically we need to start out with a, a set of colors that we know are going to behave um, the way they would behave if we were doing a painting. So I'm wiping this away. Okay. Darkest dark green. Going back to the Viridian. I think I'll go ahead and just do the mixing of that right here. Going back to the Viridian. I can see that Viridian with its, within itself is a very dark dark. But it's a blue-green. 
it's not a yellow, it's not a green green it's just a blue green now the way I can adjust that is just to add a tiny bit wipe off the palette knife a tiny bit of yellow into this blue green and I just keep this mix it very carefully so that it doesn't spread all over the palette now you can see that when I add that tiny bit of yellow in this very dark green, it subtracts out the blue. And the only other thing I'll need to do to that now, what we want here, is we want a dark green that is almost black. So let's see, do we have that? Because as, um, as, as green moves into the shadow, it's going to get a little cooler. It's also going to get more neutral. So I'm going to hold my palette knife up here. That's pretty dark. So I think maybe I'll use that as the darkest green. So, um, but what I could do, um, what I could do is I could add a little bit of alizarin crimson to it and darken it even more. But I think for the sake of this study, I'm going to leave that there as the darkest green. Now I'm going to go over here. And I want the, high, the, the lightest green. So that lightest would go right in here. Uh, but I want that as the lightest green. So what I'll do there is I'll just start with white. Right here. Just like that. And I need just a hint. Just a hint of this color. Now let's see what happens if I have just a hint of that color. It feels like a lighter green. And that's what we want. We want the, we want the color, the, we want the uh, value to be the lightest green. You see it feels a little bit cool, but with it, this being a scientific study, we're just going to leave it a little bit cool now. If we were adjusting that for, for light and shadow, we might need to add a little yellow to it. But for this study, let's just start out with these mixtures and not get too complicated with it. Okay, what about red? Red, going into the darkest dark. Uh, the darkest red I have on my palette is alizarin crimson. So I'm going to pull alizarin crimson. And alizarin crimson is also a very strong color. So what we are dealing with here is we're dealing with the reds that are very, very strong and the greens that are not quite so strong. Now I can add into that just a tiny bit of the natural red to get it closer um, to the red, uh, get it closer as far as the dark, darkest red, get it closer in relationship to this color right here. All right, now let's see. That works pretty well as the darkest dark for red. All right, now I have almost, uh, I have almost all the colors I need in order to set a or in order to, to create a, a chart that shows neutrality and value uh, as they relate to each other. One more, one more pile of paint here and I'll be ready to go. So I'll bring some white right here. You really need that much probably. Take the natural red. Now what I need to happen, I need a light red that's in the same value range as this. So I'll take just a bit of naphthal red, pull it right in here, and change. Now remember that naphthal red is very, very strong. You can see it already. It didn't take much on the back of that palette knife to change that white into a pink. Pink, <laughs> you, can't get, you can't get a light red without getting pink, so just be happy with that. That's just the way color works. All right, so that will be our lightest light. Now get this naphthal red away from here so I don't contaminate it any, for, any further. Now, what do we have? Uh, we're set now that we uh, set with our colors. We have the hues adjusted to as close to exact complements as we can get them. And they should remain exact complements uh, in all these value ranges from the darkest dark to the middle values to the lightest light. And so now we're going to the next quick tip where we're going to build a chart based on these color mixtures. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com 
and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. And thanks for watching.